Hi guys, today I'm going to be uh, refinishing a dresser that my mom gave me. So essentially I'm gonna get working on it today. So let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna move that into there. You don't have to watch. Okay, so I was wrong. I'm going to be working on stripping a chair that I started a couple weeks ago. Um, I just got too excited about the dresser because I went to pick up some um, poles for it today. So that's all I have on my mind. Um, I'm gonna start on stripping a chair that's gonna be used for um, my studio space. I picked this up for $5 at a thrift store. Um, I've never stripped furniture before, so I'm going to start one side, finish off the one side that I started with furniture stripper, and then the other side, or sorry, paint stripper, and the other side I'm going to um, use a sander and see how well that does. I did wash um, and clean this entire thing before I started. So I'm going to get started and see which works best. If the furniture stripper on this particular, or the paint stripper on this particular piece of furniture, um, we're going to see if that is uh, easier or uh, harder than using a sander. All right, let's get started. All right, first things first, PPE. You want to make sure that you're going to protect your eyes from any of that um, splash back from the furniture stripper. You're also going to want rubber gloves to protect your hands from the chemicals. And then you're also going to want a mask. Do you want to wear a mask to protect yourself from breathing in the volatile chemicals of the um, paint remover? and then also the par particles from sanding. So let's get started. Day three. Um, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. I keep getting uh, sidetracked by um, work and life related things. So hopefully today it gets done. Let's see how that goes. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
with stripper and then half sanding. It was um, a lot of paint and a lot of, it was kind of a lacquer paint. is very, very thick. And um, as you can see, there's still quite a bit left on the chair, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start using a sander on this because I'm getting fucking tired of um, trying to get into the nooks and the crannies of this chair. So my suggestion for anybody who is planning on refinishing a chair similar to this, uh, things that you want to watch out for are, are um, details like this because it's really difficult in these areas to work and I imagine once I get to sanding it's going to suck. Um, a thing that you want to note on chairs also, uh, places where people have sat so they've worn down the um, the finish and the paint on it, it's gonna be much easier to move paint from say this kind of area and this kind of area compared to like the legs and and places people's button feet don't sit. So just be prepared for that if you're picking out chairs to try to refinish. Um, the reason I'm going through all this work is I really liked the chair and I want to refinish it um, to have a seat in, in my studio. Again, this is, this is my studio. It's a mess right now, but I did get it cleaned out recently. All right, I'm gonna get to sanding. Why the fuck are you refinishing this chair? It looks fine enough. I am refinishing this chair because I need a seat uh, for my studio space, but also the um, the price of building materials right now is ridiculous. And um, so I'm having to take a break from any of the woodworking stuff that I've been doing and sort of uh, focus, on, focus on something else. So I'm gonna focus on the furniture that's going to go into the space that I'm not going to build um, until the price of lumber and the price of other building materials drop a bit. Hopefully that'll happen well, before summer. Anyway, that's why I'm refinishing this chair. So here's why PPE is important. Putting a drop cloth down is important. You can see that uh, I have a dust collector on the back of my orbital sander. And I was um, sanding on a drop cloth. And then I swept up the floor. And you can see all the dust. That's a pretty significant pile of dust and debris. And it even it swept and it's still like, you know, all over the fucking place. So that is why you should probably not do it in a place you don't want to get all that. I, um, get that everywhere. Uh, wear res a respirator or like a, a wear a mask because you don't want to breathe that. Um, one of the things I wanted to know, if you're picking out furniture to, uh, to refinish, it's very important um, to wear a mask because older furniture is gonna have paint on it and you never know if there's lead and lead is a toxin. And then also, I mean, you see all that dust that doesn't count the dust I threw into the grass off my mat and uh, the, the dust that's in the catch-all. You don't know what is in that paint. 
and so you want to make sure that you're wearing um, the right PPE. All right, let's take a look at the chair. I've finished uh, using the orbital sander. I'm gonna switch to hand sanding. So let's take a look before I start. But you'll see underneath that dark wood is this nice, what I assume is oak. Um, so I'm just going to hand sand that down a bit. And then like I said, it's gonna be done for a while. So this will be a, a video one. And then when I have time to, <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um, when I have time uh, to finish it down the road, then I'll pick up and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it when I paint it and when I make it fancy, when I put a cushy cover on the seats and all that stuff. But for right now, let's get to hand sanding. to love the sand. I'm not going to put any money on it. Hi guys, today I'm going to be, I was wrong. Et qu'un s'en avait tout simplement, où Dieu, pauvre et chantant, en tout chemin, en tout lieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu. À l'époque où Jean Santerre d'Angleterre était...